Kevin from San Diego. This thing is long, long, long. Um, so I'm we, we might have to take this in bite-sized pieces here, okay. Alan. So what, what Kevin from San Diego, he's, he writes in, and he's like, hey, I'm trying to figure out what to do with universal life policies that have large cash values. As cash value grows, the amount of actually insurance coverage declines. Since I could get the cash value without dying, I think I'd like to get access to this cash value or at least understand other ways to get access than cashing out or dying. Some background. I'm 58. Bride is 55. I have a military pension and some disability income. I'm also still working for another couple years. The disability payment stops at my death. The military retirement is reduced to 55%. So I want the insurance to cover those potential drops in income. I could also use it for long-term care if a doc says I'm going to die soon when I enter a nursing home, an accelerated death benefit, or something like that. I won't need the insurance for insurance estate tax. I don't expect to die uh, with that much money. Okay. All right. Thanks for that little backdrop, Kev. Thanks for um, your service, first of all. A um, little military retirement. Um, so then he bought some life insurance, right? Because he's got a pension. And so if he were to die, his bride-to-be... Um, would only receive 55% of the pension. His VA benefit, I'm guessing, is that's what he has. Um, the disability benefit is uh, would go to zero. Because I've never, ever in my history of financial planning now have met someone that has a military pension that does not have a tax-free VA pension. <laughs> it is pretty common, isn't it? Everyone gets disabled somehow. Somehow. Yeah. Scratched something. Yeah, we would have been disabled years ago. <laughs> that's why they put us on radio. <laughs> um but Kevin, thank you for your service. So he's got these universal policies, Al. He's trying to figure out what the hell to do with them. So he continues to write. Huh. Um, I have a universal life policy with two hundred forty-five thousand dollars coverage and cash value of ninety-one thousand bucks. So he's really covering about one hundred sixty thousand dollars. The insurance is one hundred sixty grand because ninety thousand is his. Two forty-five is. What the insurance is, you take the difference. That's what, really what he's. Yeah, and for. I think a lot of people don't really understand that. So you've got a policy. If you pass away, your beneficiary, presumably your bride, gets two hundred forty-five thousand dollars. So so that's great, but you have a cash surrender value today, which is your own money of ninety thousand. So as you said, the, the actual insurance value is the difference between the two because you could take the ninety thousand right now. So he has a net, um, uh, which is paid up in 2021. What paid up means, for those of you keeping score here, is that he would not have to pay any more premiums into the policy. So now that cash value of $91,000 will continue to pay that coverage. Uh, the $91,000, of course, goes down in value because the cash value is now paying the premiums instead of our friend Kevin that's paying the premiums out of cash flow. Uh, he's got another one. He's got another um Fully paid up one with fifty seven thousand dollars coverage, in cash value of twenty five. Uh, so he's got twenty five. Again, you do the math, split it in half, whatever. He's got about twenty five, twenty seven thousand um, bucks. I also have two term policies: three hundred thousand dollars expiring twenty twenty four, three hundred fifty policy expiring twenty twenty one. My bride has two hundred thousand in universal life with a cash value of sixty one thousand. Uh, and a 30,000 term rider that ends in 2024. Okay, so she's retired part timer with a $400 a month pension from PERS, killing it. Boom. I don't need to replace her income. The life insurance value of the permanent policies grows a little bit each year, but not as much as the cash value. Cash value generally is growing about 5% each year. About half of it would be tax free if I cash it out, basis is 50% or so. I could borrow 70% of the cash value, too. The kids have moved out. Uh, still a mortgage, but just some wedding and grad school tuition assistance. Uh, my health is not good enough to get a preferred rate if I buy new policies. Overall, we are in pretty good shape. $1.6 in investable assets split between TSP, 401k, 457, Roth in a brokerage account. Once we sell the house and leave California, uh, we should be set. Uh, so the insurance is really lanyap. Lanyap. 
Yeah. You bonus. don't know what lanyard yeah, means? It's, it's a bonus. Yeah, it's just like kind of, hey, you know. Yeah. It's like an extra extra, 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 extra gift. Extra. Lanyard. I see that all the time. Don't really need it. Yeah. You know. Of course, but, Andy had to look that up for but, us. Uh, yeah, because I would have said langin Gappy. Yeah, I would have said, yeah, uh, la- lag me a pee. <laughs> lag me a pee pee. Uh. <laughs> I guess the G is silent. Nice job pulling that off, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Insurance is really a lag me a pee. It was a lag ni a pee. Do you think he did that on purpose? Uh, probably. Because he knows we can't pronounce. <laughs> lag me a pee Yeah. So, all right, let's so let's let's. Okay. Ke- oh, Kevin, if I would charge by the, um, w- w- yeah, f- words here, holy buckets. What should he do with these policies, Al? Um, you know what? You gotta is one thing he didn't really tell us is how much is his pension. You know what I mean? So is the cash or is the life insurance policy if he dies is that enough to cover his bride um you know to to cover that 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 pension Yeah because the pe- the survivor benefits only 55%. So in other words 45% of that pension would go away and the VA disability would go away. Here's what I would do. If I was Kevin, <clears throat> I would run two scenarios. I'm going to be like, all right, because he's leaving California. I don't know where he's going. Why would you want to leave California, Kevin? Probably because the cost of living here is very high and the taxes are through the roof. Uh, besides that? Yeah, besides that, it's a great place to be. <laughs> it's a great place to be. Um, so he's splitting. Um, so he needs to figure out first, how much money is he spending, right? How much money are you as a couple spending? Yeah, and, then, and what, what's the need if you were to pass away? I think that's what you're concerned right. about. He's got $1.6 million. He's got a military pension, a VA pension. He'll have Social Security, right? He's pretty young, right? Oh, he's, he's 58. 58. So he's got 10 years to bridge, roughly, you know, a little bit less than that um, for Social Security. Depends on when he retires. Right. She's retired. She's killing it. She's 55, uh, making 400 bucks a month uh, um, part-time, but then... So it's like, all right, you're leaving California. How much money do you want to spend? Here's your fixed income. Is that covering 100% of your living expenses? If it is, you know what? I would get rid of the insurance altogether. I'd cash that thing out. Because if you die, you have $1.6 million that's going to your bride that would be plenty to cover her needs. Yeah. So in other words, even though the fixed income would go down, there's this big pool of of money. There's a pool of money to cover right. to, to pay for the other 45% of pension that's that's leaving, plus whatever your VA is. And as you mentioned, the insurance coverage it really isn't that high when you consider a lot of this is already your own money. The, the one policy, which is smaller, it's almost half of it is your own money. Right. And man, uh, they, he, you've got a lot of insurance, Kevin. Is, is your neighbor an insurance agent? <laughs> <laughs> or your brother-in-law? Now, on, on the other hand, Joe, if uh, if Kevin were not in good health at all and felt a very short, impaired life expectancy, yeah, of course you keep it. Uh, yeah, you keep it, right? Sure. Because that's that's because then you look at the internal rate of return. Yeah. Because you look at ninety-one thousand dollars growing to two hundred forty-five thousand dollars. Let's say Kevin's going to die in five years. Well, ninety thousand growing to two forty-five in five years. That's a pretty high it's, internal it's rate of return. Probably not going to happen. All tax-free to yeah. the beneficiary, of course. Right. So you look at it. You can look at it that way too. Say, all right, well, here, what's my life expectancy? I, yeah, I'm a pr- pretty healthy. guy. Guy, I got 10 years to live, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 years to live. The death benefit's going to be $245,000. You take that $90,000 out, pay a little bit of tax. Some of it's going to be return of basis. Now you have full access to it, right? And then what's your break even? How long can that 90000 go to two hundred forty five? What's your internal rate of return? If you think, hey, the insurance is better because, A, at least the heirs are going to get it. But it sounds to me he wants to burn through everything. Right? It says, hey, the kids or whatever, they're, they're out of the house. They're all good. It sounds like he was a really good saver. Right. He's got $1.6 million. You probably needed the insurance at the time to protect your income. Um, I don't know. You met your bride. It's, it, I mean, the bride, is that like bride to be or wife? That's wife. He calls her his bride. Oh, that's so sweet. It too. is. I thought he's like, hey, <laughs> hooking up with, a, you know, my bride. Yeah. So that's they've probably that- been married for 30 years. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, they, they're probably high school sweethearts. <laughs> so that's what it sounds like. And right? every day is like wedding day. It's so good. It's awesome. That's what uh, you want. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm still waiting for I it. Know, I right? want to be like Kev. Yeah. 
<laughs> I want I want pensions in one point six. Yeah, leaving California and a bride. Have my bride. A little disability income tax free. <laughs> it's it's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, but I would have, you know, that's how I would look at it. I mean, yeah, I agree. Do you got any other comments on this? Well, I think that I I think for. I'll put it this way. For, I, for most healthy people, I, I would not keep the insurance. And I like how you point to yourself like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 like myself. Like, yeah, like most. <laughs> because, because I think you can do better with the cash value on your own. Well, do, do the math. Let's figure it out. Okay. So for those of you that have cash value and insurance, a um, few things that you want to look at. We're running an example here that Kevin had a two hundred forty-five or two hundred fifty thousand dollars death benefit in his life insurance policy. He has ninety-one thousand dollars of cash value. He didn't even tell us what the premium was because he still he's still paying premium for another couple of years. Right. We assumed that there was no more premiums. Yeah. So then the question was, do I keep this or do I get rid of it? So. You can run an, a calculation. So Al ran a calculation one way, and I ran it another way. So we can. So it, it depends on if you're right or left-hand bra- brained uh, to see what makes the most sense for you. All right. So I'll I'll go through my calculation, which is it's looking at the ninety-one thousand and and what could that earn uh, on its own, like outside of the the insurance policy. Now, of course, there would be taxes. We're make, we're keeping this really simple, right? So, in other words, uh, if you take $91,000 and you do a 6% rate of return, that's pretty conservative, over a 10-year period, you would end up with 163000 So, let's compare that to the life insurance policy, which is two fifty. So, if you think you're going to live less than 10 years, you might just want to keep the insurance policy, right? Yeah. Because you, you're not going to do better than that unless you take a lot of risk. Or unless you need capital to spend. Sure. Now, a uh, twenty-year at six percent would be two hundred ninety-one thousand. So you'd do better doing that than having the insurance. And a thirty-year would be five hundred twenty-three thousand. So you'd actually do a lot better than ins- than the insurance. So, um, Kevin is fifty-eight, correct? Correct. So, the likelihood of Kevin reaching age eighty-eight, I would say, is probably sixty, seventy percent. Yeah, or at least fifty. I mean, th- that's today. That's today. Well, it's six- Just wait for 20 years. I yeah. mean, they're going to be putting little chips <laughs> in our bread, and we'll live for 120. Well, just You I got mean, cancer? No problem. Here's a pill. Right. Just, I mean, just today. A six- you don't think so? I, I think that would be awesome. I think that's, so, too. I'm <laughs> signing up tomorrow. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, just today, Joe. So, a 65-year-old male, uh, the average is age 84. And so you're you're saying now when he gets to that point, it'll be there'll be a lot more medical advances, and I tend to agree with that. Sure, I mean you can see the advance. I mean, each week, each month, each year. I mean, there's a little bit more. So, right? so in other words, another way to say this is 30 years is not unrealistic at all. So for Kevin to get to age 88, that's very possible. So how I ran this for Kevin is that I looked at all right, if you got ninety one thousand dollars. And that is going to pay out a two hundred fifty thousand dollar death benefit, and let's assume that Kevin reaches age eighty eight, right. so thirty years. What is his rate of return? Um, it would be three point three one percent. So, in other words, inside the insurance policy, what did that ninety one thousand? Three point three six percent is what to get to. Two fifty. Right. So let's say if you had ninety thousand dollars, you invested it for thirty years at three and a half percent, roughly, you would have two hundred fifty grand. Got it. So then the so then how you look at it is to say, all right, over the next thirty years, do you think I could achieve a higher rate of return than three point three percent, or am I good with that guarantee? Because that's his guarantee. He's going to die, right? We know that. That's a guarantee. We just don't know when. If he dies prior to, let's say, 88, well, then that internal rate of return is a lot higher. Sure. If he dies past that 88, then that internal rate of return is lower. So it's just looking at, A, do you need the insurance? Given the the small facts that we know about him, I would say probably not uh, because he has a lot of other assets. He's got a good pension, and he's got a lot of other assets right? for, and, for his bride to take over. Yes. And... Um, and two, uh, it doesn't sound like he wants to give a legacy. You know, hey, let's build this thing up. Um, the final thing that I would do um, is, I bet you that policy's pretty old. 
Yeah, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm guessing here because it looks like Kevin loves to buy insurance, and he's probably already checked this out. He says his health is not really necessarily in great shape. Yeah, because he was maybe looking at either redoing it, getting a different policy, or maybe an additional policy. I would say still check it out because that $91,000, let's see if he bought that policy 20 years ago. So the cost of insurance for you know the, the, the tables that they used 20 years ago are completely different today. The life insurance industry was completely different 20 years ago than it is today because you more or less had mutual type insurance country I mean you know companies sure mutual of Omaha right. mass mutual Northwestern mutual well, you know the names right and so what has happened to these big life insurance companies is that they demutualized in other stock companies and so in a mutual life insurance company the the policy owners are the owners of the company so if I own a policy I own the company in a stock company, the stockholders are, right? That's us. If we want to buy Lincoln Financial, we're a stockholder. We want profits. We're demanding, right? We have a board of directors. Let's fire the CEO. Let's do this, right? Capitalism. And so what has happened is drove pricing, right? And because there's more competition, it is like buy more policies or sell more policies. Sell more policies is drive pricing a little bit lower. Plus actuarial, we're living a lot longer. So the price of insurance today is completely different than when it was maybe 20 years ago. So it might make sense for him to look and say maybe that $90,000 of cash value could buy him, I don't know, maybe $400,000. Because they're doing the same math that you and I did, bud. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? And and the other thing, too, like, let's just say that that worked, and then he could do a 1035 exchange, and so he wouldn't have to pay taxes on any built-in gains inside the cash value. Right. And so it's a tax-free transaction. You don't need the money. You look at, all right, the insurance company saying, okay, the internal 3.36. All right, well, let's we could give them a little bit more than that because it's just arbitrage. They're taking that money. They're investing it in something else and trying to get a higher rate of return, just like you could do on your own. So, I mean, you, you just got to think outside the box here um, and, and figure out what's the best for you. So, God, I don't know, man. That's long-winded question and answer. <laughs> It was. But we're thorough. thorough. We exactly. are very <laughs> thorough here at Your Money, Your Wealth. If you give us a question, we're going to take the time and figure it out. 